Ayan. Good evening everyone. Good evening po. Good evening. Good evening. Andito na naman si Teacher Seppi. Makipagudulan sa inyo tonight. Ayan. Medyo napaaga tayo ngayon kasi mayroon po tayong uh, guest coach. Ayan. Hello. Good evening everyone. Good evening po. Ayan. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Pa-share po ako ng live natin, teachers. Pa-share po ako ng live natin. Ayan. Hello everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Hello sa eight viewers natin. <laughs> Ayan. Sige po. Pa-share po ako ng live natin, teachers. Ayan. English major tayo ngayong gabi. Ayan. English major. Hello, good evening everyone. Good evening po. Good evening, good evening. Ayan, pa-share po ako ng live natin. Pa-share po ako ng live. Thank you so much sa mga nag-share. Si Teacher Norshida, Teacher Mohaimin Claro. Ayan, thank you so much. Teacher Raymond uh, Gemar Patoy, Teacher Kino uh, Bainas Kasha. Ayan. Ayan, mention nyo na yung mga ano nyo, itag nyo na yung mga friends nyo. Ayan, mga classmates nyo sa college na English major. Ayan, for tonight, English major muna tayo, ha? Ayan. Ayan, thank you so much, Teacher Raymond. Uh, ay, tag na ito, Teacher Tassel pala, ayan. Teacher Raymond Hinarpatoy, thank you so much po. Ayan. Hello. Good evening po, Teacher Rachel Iliano Secor. Ayan. Thank you so much. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ayan. Hello sa 167 English majors dyan. Ayan. For tonight, duguan tayo with one of our English coaches at TCRC. Okay. Hello, hello. Yeah, yes po. Ayan. Hello, teacher Seppi. Teacher na po ako dahil sa kapanood ko ng video mo. Kapa Nakapasa po ako all the way from Bugkalat High School, Nueva Vizcaya. Ayan. Congratulations, teacher Marilug uh, Gabugen. Ayan. Congratulations po. Yes po. Good evening. Good evening. Pasya po ako ng live natin, teacher, para makapag-start na po tayo. Thank you so much, teacher Jimmy Liboro Montilla. Ayan. Thank you po. Oh, yeah, sa mga nagtatanong po sa majorship coaching natin, lahat po ng major subjects po, meron po tayong coaching ngayong weekend po. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. po yan. Ayan, for 150 pesos. Kompleto po tayo sa major subjects. May, meron tayong mathematics, meron tayong English, uh, social science, general science, uh, Filipino, MAPE, TLE plus AFA, at saka values education. I-message nyo lang pa ako sa mga gustong mag-avail ngayong weekend. Meron din po tayong ano, available na uh, full package po. Pwede tayong uh, mag-avail ng full package. Mas mura po siya. Ayan, 1,200 sa major subjects, kasama na po doon ang 16 days na session, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., 2 days na pre-final, and 4 uh, days na final coaching sa major subjects po yan. Ayan, 1,200. Saan pa kayo dyan? Meron din po tayong ano sa Perf Ed and Gen Ed. Ayan, 2,000 pesos, 24 days na regular coaching. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. po yan. Tap Pre-final and 14 days na final coaching sa Janet and Proof Ed po yan for 2,000 pesos. Full package po yan ha. Mas makamura kayo pag nag-full package kayo. Ayan. Sige. Yung promo natin uh, ng full package uh, will last until June 30 po. Ayan. Sige. Sa mga gustong sumali, pwede po tayo mag-per session. Teacher Seppi, pwede po ba yan? Uh, kasi ako may work po ako 8 to 5 p.m. Okay lang po yan, teacher, kasi recorded po yung live session natin. Wala pong problema doon, okay? Kung ano yung napanood ng mga ano natin, live audience during the live session, yun at yun din ang mapapanood nyo during replay. Ayan. Pwede, kaya pwede nyo rewatch yung ano natin. Okay? <clears throat> Full package na mag-start na din po. Sabay po yung teacher. Ayan, kasabay po yun. Ang ano lang, sa full package, babayaran 
ang buo. Ayan. Pero pwede yun ano ha, pwede yun installment. Basta hanggang June 30, ma-full uh, natin yung payment nun. Ayan. Sige. Message nyo lang pa ako and uh, yung staff natin, uh, sila na po ang bahala mag-reply sa inyo with regards to the details kung paano po sumali at saan po tayo magbayad. Okay po? Ayan. Sige. Ayan, pwede na, tis, uh, pwede na siguro tayo mag-start kasi konti lang naman yung mga English majors dyan. Ayan, kompleto po tayo ng major subjects ha, sa, uh, sa coaching natin. Kaya message nyo po ako para ma-send natin yung details kung paano sumali. Okay po? Ayan, without further ado, ayan, ang coach natin for tonight, ang guest coach natin, of course, English major. Para sa English major yan. At ang pagkakalam ko, may PH. Ano na siya? Uh, ongoing PH degree. As uh, uh, ang pagkakalam ko ha. Ayan, at isa sa pinakamagaling na coaches. Ayan, without further ado, please welcome and say hi to your coach for tonight, si Coach Kevin Jake. Ayan. Hello coach, good evening po. Hi coach, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Ayan. Ayan si coach. Yes po, Coach. Good evening po. Uh, I know, I know may ma-share po kayong uh, uh, ano sa sa ay may may share kayo yung ano uh, with regards to the English major dito sa mga reviewers natin lalo lalo na sa mga TCRC babies because I know you have the expertise on the field ayan sige po coach take your ano po take it away po coach and good luck laban po tayo teachers god bless dito lang po ako mag mag ano mag-aabang Thank you very much po, Teacher Sefi. And maraming maraming salamat once again, uh, Sir Sefi, for the warm introduction. Maraming salamat din po sa mga English majors I heard are actually my um, dynamics for this review. Don't worry po, we'll keep it very brief and very concise as usual. It's because we only have like an, an hour uh, that was given to us to finish these reviews. We hope to see you on the uh, incoming rounds of the reviews with Teacher Sefi's um virtual review sessions but for this evening i have prepared 10 different questions that would uh, that you yourselves will answer and we will collaborate together to actually uh, succeed these questions kaya mamaya in in some portions of my lecture i will be opening the the spaces for uh you answering them and trying it out para masimulate din natin ang real uh masimulate din natin kung anong nangyari sa review centers i mean uh licensure reviews okay i hope everybody you don't mind if i will be mixing my languages uh particularly i would be using both the english and the filipino language i i hope uh you would not misinterpret me because uh, others would think that if it's an english review it has to be like very pure in the english language but sometimes uh multilingualism is also a good technique to actually uh to cut through your your lectures okay so i hope you don't mind okay but just by any chances that you have like queries or concerns to the different items to the key answers or to the given options on each of the particular questions please do not hesitate to privately message me so that i can uh, have it or also um address your concerns via the public comment boxes okay are we all good i want you to please comment for this evening i want you to give me one word adjective that will describe how are you feeling this evening ayan uulitin ko to our to our english majors i want you to please key in into our comment box one particular adjective adjectival word that will describe your feeling your emotion this evening o yan abangan natin sa comment boxes kung ano kaya ang ating one word adjectives that best fit or describe our feelings this evening ayan Pero wala pa po ako nakita on our comment box. Ayan. Motivated from Ma'am Lady Lynn. Tama? Awesome. Okay. Sabi nila ang awesome daw ay supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Have you heard of that word, English majors? We also have the word excited. And of course, I love the energy coming from the English majors in the line. Okay. Now, we will be officially starting our session. And I have prepared 10 different questions. Uh, I just want to put on two disclaimers that disclaimer that these questions do not belong to me uh, i have modified some of the questions but most of them were actually um questions that i got from different references and resources okay and i hope that these 10 questions would also occupy majority of what will come out really or in actuality to your incoming licensure reviews okay so you are very privileged that you've attended this free session okay i'll be starting already um Although I have like a query on the moving of the of the slide, um, uh, teacher Sefi. Hi, sir. Ayun. 
Ah, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, please give me a moment. Ayun. Sir Sefi, ah, uh, Coach. Hi, Coach. Ayan. Everybody, may I please um inform? Ah, uh, Coach Sefi, I am not. I'm trying to go to my first slide, but it seems not being projected on my screen. Nakababad po ang aking empty slide on the screen. Tama po ba? Ayan. Hello, Coach. Uh, PM po. PM po. Yeah. Okay po. Uh, I'll be messaging you. Okay. Uh, to our participants, um, to our reviewees, please stand by. Thank you very much for your kind uh, cons um, understanding. Yes, Coach. Uh, There you have it, okay? So we'll just be um, waiting for some responses, so I know. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, may please verify to our reviewees, you're only seeing a blank slide on your screens. Is that correct? Am I correct? Yeah, are, you're just seeing an empty slide on your screen, correct? Okay, well, the others are busy keying in their one-word adjectives. Thank you very much for your active participation. Thank you, Ma'am Mary Joy, for um, confirming. Ayan. Okay, there you have it. Uh, sorry, it's taking actually time for the projection. Okay, I don't know basically how to move to my slide because what I'm only seeing is uh, I'm stuck with the first um, empty slide. Okay. Okay, I hope uh, it will be remediated. Okay, there you have it. I think you're seeing already my next slide. Thankfully, I was able to navigate it myself already. Uh, by the way, thank you very much for the assistance, uh, uh, Coach Asefi. Okay, I'm all right here. Let's start. Um, Everybody, please confirm if you're seeing the first question on your screen right now. Okay, we are seeing. Okay, thank you very much, Rio Lisa, Mam Rio Lisa, and Romlin for your response. Okay, so first, ladies and gentlemen, the first question is, please understand that as English majors, when you're going for the real or the actual licensure review, you are not just stuck to one special layer of English. What do I mean? Uh, you have to understand that as English majors, we are subjecting ourselves to different lines, okay, or different sub-specializations in our specialization. So under English, marami tayong pag-uusapan dyan. We can dwell on literature, we dwell with language or linguistics, we deal with theories and their practices in real life or actual English language teaching. That's why uh, it really has to be a serious time for you to concentrate on reviewing for your um, English, upcoming English licensure exam and of course the rest of the parts which are Gen Ed and then um, Prof Ed. But for in as far as the English major subjects are concerned, uh, you have to equally divide or balance your attention to the different sub-specializations. That's why the 10 questions that I have personally picked for you and will be letting you to letting you answer um, in this one hour session are questions that come from different sub-specializations of English. At ang nauna dyan, right on your screen, is what you call fundamentals of literature, okay? So, pag-uusapan pag natin sa tanong na ito, or we will talk about literary concepts or fundamentals of literature, which is one of the many sub-specializations of our major. So, first, which literary device is used when the author places two or more things together in order to suggest a link between them or to emphasize the contrast between them. So I have provided four options. A is flashback, second is plausibility, third is just juxtaposition, and D is characterization. Now I'm giving you um, Ma'am Bethelyn, nauna na si Ma'am Bethelyn, letter C daw ang kanyang choice. Lloyd is also letter C. 
Eugene is also letter C. Ayan. I'll be waiting for the responses of the others. Which among the four options do you think perfectly or correctly answer the item? Okay. Now, while the others are answering, let me rationalize the question for you. Okay. So as as re, as examinees later on, you will not answer right away. You have to pause for a moment very shortly and try to reflect and expound on the question. Okay. So look at how the question was phrased okay the keyword there is uh, what i normally do when i take examinations or during my batch when i was taking the licensure exam back in 2015 i always internalize the questions and part of internalizing the question is choosing the keywords or the key phrases that build the question that's very important to do so first one the keyword there is literary device doon pa lang you have to like cabinet your mind okay or you you try to like isipin yun na our mind is a cabinet or a drawer so ilalabas natin ngayon yung mga knowledge natin about magbabalik tanaw tayo we will recount or recall our knowledge on the literary devices because probably um one of those many literary devices stuck in our memory is one is the is the correct answer um for the question another one is this literary device, according to the question, is to uh, putting two or more things together so that it will emphasize uh, so that um there there there's differences. Kasi kapag contrast ang pinag-usapan natin yan ay differences. Meaning to say, in our own language, we understand that the question is asking you about which device is being used by an author or a writer of a literary text in such a way that when he puts two different things, different persons, two different events together in the story, makikita natin ang kanilang pagkakaiba. Okay? That's where the contrast word is coming in. So most of you, I think, answered letter C. Okay? Looking at the questions, my mga my my first strategy na tayo, one of the strategies or practical strategies that I can share to you, my dear um examinees, is first you have to do a trial and error um uh, method okay so which among the options ang nawawala okay all of them I must say are literary I mean are are um are about literature flashback plausibility juxtaposition and characterizations so let's try to recount when you say it's a flashback it's actually this um style or technique of the author or the writer para magbalik tanaw okay so in a certain story there will be like events that will be talking about what really happened prior to that or it will bring you back as uh, audiences to what happened first, okay? Flashback ang tawag natin doon, okay? Um, number two, plausibility. Uh, we talk about plausibility as something that plausible. Um, maybe some of the characters and the events may probably or potentially happen in real life. So we conclude that the event is plausible to our lens as our readers or as audiences. Third one, juxtaposition. We'll try to skip that muna. Third is characterization. So you know, a characterization is this literary technique or style of the author in, um, in, in determining which in which way are we going to introduce the characters of the story. Okay, so the, the description that the author or the writer gives for a certain character in the story is already one of the many manifestations of doing characterization in a text, okay? I, I have skipped uh, letter C juxtaposition because that is the correct answer, okay? Uulitin ko po, letter C is the correct answer. Juxtaposition is this literary device or literary technique, okay, in which two persons two different objects, two different events, or two different com concepts are put together in a certain story in, and, that, and that their differences are being seen. So one of the basic examples I can give you as an example of juxtaposition is the words like ugly, um, syempre wala namang pangit, right? Uh, uh, ugly character and a beautiful character. The adjectives ugly and beautiful are directly opposite of each other. Positive ang beautiful and the negative word or negative adjective naman ang ugly. Doon pa lang, if the author uses these two words to describe certain characters or events in the story, there you can see that there is something different because na opposite yung dalawang words. That is juxtaposition. Okay? Or if I am the writer and I will give you a notion of night and then later on gives you a notion of day, the day and night is already 
a juxtaposition. Okay? Now, everyone, I want you to please say, um, say awesome if you were able to understand the explanation for question number one. Type the word awesome if you were able to understand correctly my discussion for the question number one. Okay, so number one is juxtaposition. Okay, maraming salamat to the first four persons who commented and the rest uh, for, for the following responses. Okay, now let's try to move on to the next uh, level. This is another subspecialization of English and we talk about our very own which is the Philippine literature. Okay, now... Um, among, marami tayong pwedeng i-ask. We have like millions of questions to ask about our own literature. But this is just one of the many for the case of this session. So the first one is, the Maranao stories about Pilandok are examples of what? Is it A, fantastic stories, B, creation myths, three, uh, C, folk tales, D, folk epics. Now, your time, I'll be giving you 10 seconds to please key in your perceived answer for the second question on Philippine literature. Ano kaya dito ang tumutukoy or uh, ang kinabibilangan ng ating story titled Pilandok? Okay? So, others are answering letter D. Others are C. The trends of our responses, I can see on the comment box here, are ranging from letters D and C. Okay? So, ano kaya? Letters D and C? Mm, okay. Karamihan ay letter C ang, ang, ang sagot nila. Okay. Now, okay. Maraming maraming salamat for those responses. I love this. The energy that are coming from the future licensed English teachers of the Philippines. Ayan, i-claim na natin yan for your active responses, okay? I appreciate that. Now, um, okay, now let's try to uh, rationalize this. So everyone, what comes to your mind when you talk about Maranao or Maguindanao, okay? So particularly, you can um, imagine Palawan, for example. So yun palang keyword na yun, okay? Again, uh, hindi tayo sasagot agad. As English majors, we have to be critical. We have to process the questions first right in our minds so that uh, we know which of the options are we going to pick and which ones we will not pick, okay? So Maranao, what comes to my mind if you talk about Maranao stories, probably these stories were written from all the way from Palawan siguro. Um, Pilandok is also a very um, a, a key a word in the question, and you know that uh, pilandok is actually a mouse deer, okay? Mouse deer ang pilandok. So, ang tanong, saan nabibilang ang kwentong pilandok, okay? The others might not be familiar here, but uh, you have to be familiar as English majors to our very own literature, okay? So, pag-isa-isahin natin yung options, let's try to rationalize each of the options. First one is, we have what we call as fantastic stories, Okay? Now, if you talk about fantastic stories, definitely uh, this will feature um, this will feature characters, events, and even concepts, and even ideas, animals, and objects that really do not exist in real life. Kaya nga sila fantasy, okay? And letter B, when you talk about creation myth, um, others would believe it. Others won't, but the focus or the foci of a creation myth is a certain narrative or a certain story where something is being created, okay? Nilikha niya ang langit, therefore this is a creation story. Um, Nilikha niya ang lupa, so this is a creation story. Um, letter C is a folk tale, okay? Okay. Uh, and then letter D is a folk epic. Now everyone, I want you to please know that uh, one practical technique to determine the key answer in this question is to scrap or discard the options that you think are not part of the correct answers, okay? Or you think you are doubtful about this option. So tatanggalin natin ngayon from our options yung mga sagot na feeling natin ay nawawala, okay? Now, I feel like the the ones that are really out of place are actually fantastic stories kasi nag, meron naman talagang pilandok in real life and then creation myth. 
So we're stuck with letter C and D. Okay, tama ka dyan, Sir Eugene. Okay, letter A and B are discarded, are eliminated. At naiwan na lang sa ating options ang letter C at D. That makes it easier for us to determine because we were able to scrap out or discard and uh, eliminate the two other options na out of place. Okay? So, folk tales and epics. Now, ano ba ang pagkakaiba ng uh, folk tales and then epic? So, everybody, um, the folk tales are actually... Uh, Kailangan, you have to take note of the folk tales and the epics, okay? I'll be, I'll be reserving that for you to research on. But the key answer for our uh, second question is a folk tale, okay? So letter C, let's clap for all those people who have uh, selected letter C as the key answer. Let me just try to um add a certain idea about... Let me just add a certain idea, everybody, about creation myth, okay? Ano ba ang pagkakaiba niya sa ibang parts ng, um, sa ibang kinds ng literature? When you talk about a creation myth, normally, the characters here are actually supernatural. Maraming supernatural beings or supernatural characters dominating the story. For the folk epic, you're talking about a certain individual who is admired by many in the story as a legendary character because this person have some have done something heroic okay kaya siya folk epic okay but pinandok okay it's a story of a of a mouse deer siya yung character doon and then everybody isa siyang prankster actually if you know the story of pilandok okay i don't know if some of you knows the story of pilandok but he is a prankster. He is a mouse there. Masyado siyang mautak. He's a very cunning character. He's a prankster. Okay? So, letter C is a folk tale. Okay? That's the correct answer. Please type, please type, superb, the word superb, if you were able to answer your you were able to answer the question. I mean, you were able to understand my my um explanation on the responses. Okay? Yes, Ma'am Jari were actually, I mean, was actually uh, uploading a certain note on the folk tales. That's the same idea I have already given, okay? But thank you very much for, for, for posting that for others' references, okay? We don't have like much time to dwell on those matters because we only have a limited time to, to deal with it. But I will be waiting for you in one of the English reviews because officially I'm a part of the review panel for English courses in uh, Teacher's Office uh, virtual Licensure reviews. Okay, I hope to see you there. Now, let's try to move on to the next question. And this is about American literature. So, tapos na tayo sa basics of literature. We're done with a Philippine literature. Now, we're moving to American literature. Now, look at that. Which literary movement? Uh, I'm sorry, for the error, that is literary, not literacy. Okay, which literary movement? In American literature, examines life as it is, okay? Again, that is not literacy, that is literature. So choose among the options. A, Romanticism. B, Puritanism. C, Realism. And D is Naturalism. I want you to please key in your the letter of the choice that you think correctly answers the question. Okay, most of you are keying in letter C. Realism. Mm -hmm. Letter C nga ba? Okay. Okay. Everybody, thank you very much for your responses. I'm seeing them on the chat boxes. Um, thank you very much for your active responses, English majors. Now, let's try to go back to this, okay? The key words or phrases in the question are literary movement and then American literature, and then life as it is, okay? Those are the power phrases. Now, when you talk about literary movement, lahat naman ng mga apat na options, all of the four options that were given are actually literary movements. So walang problema. How about American literature? Are all these movements uh, pioneered by American artists or lit literary figures? Or are all of these four different movements talk about life as it is of course definitely not 
okay? So, isa-isahin natin. Let's try to rationalize each of the options. First one, we have romanticism. Romanticism is this kind of movement, everybody, that deals with stories or uh, works of art that are based on human, per, hum, of one's personal imagination, uh, one's personal uh uh, an individual's experiences or an individual's emotions or an individual's imagination. Romanticism is very centered to the one who made it. Okay, yun yung advocacy ng romanticism. Ang only point there is, in romanticism, sometimes yung mga events na or mga linalagay nating details doon are really out of the world or are really non-existing in real life. Doon pa lang, we will eliminate romanticism in our choices. Okay? Dan yun ang feature ng romanticism. Now, there is puritanism, which we all know puritanism is more closely related to religious movements. Okay? Puritanism. And then we have realism and then naturalism. Now, if we will go back to the practical technique I've given earlier, I said that there are some options that we feel like out of place that we need to eliminate. And so, we will eliminate romanticism and puritanism from the four options. So, we're left with only letter C and letter D. Realism and naturalism. Bakit ko sila iniwan? Because they are there is like a very thin line that will separate the two movements, okay? And that, uh, if we can determine that successfully, we can correctly answer the question. So which of the two movements examine life as series, okay? So realism and naturalism are the two options we will choose from. Now, let's try to compare, contrast realism and naturalism. Realism, everyone, is talking about ordinary people, okay? Again, realism is talking about ordinary people and most of these people that they're featuring in the stories are in the middle of the social pyramid. Hindi masyadong mayaman, hindi rin naman masyadong mahirap. Okay? And then, uh, whereas for naturalism, most of the characters are belonging to the lower class. Sila talaga yung nakaka-experience ng intense or immense poverty. Yun yung dalawang pagkakaiba nila. Okay? Another, realism is talking about Social divisions, social classes, naturalism talks about more serious topics that lower class individuals are experiencing such as violence, poverty, corruption, etc. Okay? Yun yung naturalism. Although, although everybody, if we will go um, talk about which of the two is the key answer, the key answer is realism okay now so uh, the persons who answered the examinees who answered letter c one point for you that is the correct answer there is realism okay now um you also have to take note that naturalism most of the topics of naturalist stories will deal with uh, human empowerment I mean, um, how the environment, heredity, and social con conditions will shape the characters. So most definitely, yung stories na, 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 na advocating naturalism, they will talk about how a man becomes corrupt-minded or nagiging corrupt corrupt-minded siya because of the influence of the environment or his heredity or other social conditions. Yun yung focus ng naturalism. But if you talk about the question, going back to the question, which one correctly and perfectly answers examining life as it is, is realism. Okay? So realism is the correct answer. Okay? Actually, naging, uh, the other authors would say that naturalism is an extension of realism. So, nagsimula lahat sa concept ng realism bago tayo nagkaroon ng naturalism. Okay? Maraming salamat. Please type this word um, perfect if you were able to understand the discussion. Please type on the comment box the word perfect if you were able to understand the discussion for the fourth question. Ayun. Okay? Now, I'm seeing the word the word perfect, okay, on my chat box, okay? Maraming salamat, okay? Now, as English majors, we really have to challenge ourselves to expound or expand our vocabulary. That's why I, I think uh, 
all of you can uh, can can do that and perfect and let's go to the fifth question this again this we move to another country or to another region and this this question is more on british or english literature now everybody um what can malilito ha english would uh either mean the subject or the language or it could also mean the people who speaks English or people who come from England where English is the native language. Tama? So, uh, sa school natin ngayon, we are no longer calling it uh, grade 9, most especially, has this nomenclature in the subject and they call it, before we call it British American Literature and Communication Arts 9. But now, in the curriculum that we follow, they changed it into, they renamed it into um, they slightly renamed it into English American Literature. So, wag kayong malilito ha, the English there are people are referring to uh, the the speakers from England where English is the uh, native language. Okay? So, English American Literature. Okay? Now, um, this one, I want to lalabas sa literature, uh, sa licensure, there will be like excerpts of your, of the stories, the poems, or other literary texts. Uh, in your in in your major okay they, that will be a big possibility so i'm giving you a sample now the following lines were taken were taken from which shakespearean sonnet okay so this line is let me not uh, let me let me not to the marriage of the true minds okay amid ab admit impediments love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove oh no it's an ever fixed mark how poetic okay now that particular excerpt is a shakespearean a shakespearean craft okay now the question is saan natin makikita which among all the hundreds of sonnets that shakespeare ever written in history would would we find that excerpt okay is it sonnet 37 is it sonnet 25 is it sonnet 16 or is it sonnet 116 now i want you now to please key in the letter of your perceived um correct answer on our comment box okay so is it a b c or D. Well, everybody, while the others are typing their responses, I did not give you the title. Kasi most definitely, if you talk about Shakespeare, Shakespeare, karamihan ng titles ng kanyang sonnets are numerical. Okay? Which means that hindi niya binibigay talaga yung um, worded title ng kanyang sonnet, but he codes it into numbers. Okay? But in, when, you, when you Google all this um, sonnet 37, it will like give you no, normally, the first line of that sonnet becomes the title of the sonnet also, okay? So others are, I mean, most of us are answering letter D, that is sonnet 116. Others have A, B, or C on their bets, okay? Now, let's try to uh, rationalize that again. The first question is, are all of these sonnets Shakespearean? My, my answer there is yes. All of the sonnets in our options is Shakespearean. So, mas mahirap. It makes our job even more dif difficult. Kung meron sa nang dalawa or kahit isa sa apat na uh, sonnets ang hindi Shakespearean, pwede natin siyang i-discard from our options. But my problem is, our problem is, it is harder because all of the four sonnets are Shakespearean. Okay? Now, let's go to another strategy. Of course, we, we're not familiar of which kung sana worded titles ang binigay, mas madali natin marirealize kung ano ang correct answer. But these are numbers and we did not read all the sonnets of William Shakespeare. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to be honest with you, I've been teaching for eight years, pero hindi lahat ng sonnets ni Shakespeare binasa ko na. Okay, so anong gagawin natin? Of course, take, hopefully na lang, we, will, we have encountered this in our English major classes so that we can answer it easily. But the correct answer here, everybody, is Sanet 116. So all those persons who answered letter D, you are correct. Okay, again, that let me not, let me not to the marriage of true minds is titled Sanet one one six okay napakaganda ng 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 sanet na yan so sanet 37 is another sanet but still from shakespeare sanet uh, 25 
that's letter B is actually uh, titled as, I mean, the first line of Sonnet 25 is let those who are um, in favor with the stars, okay? And we have Sonnet 116 as let me not to the marriage of two minds, okay? So thank you very much. Now, everybody, let's move on to another question. But before moving on, I want to clarify, I want to um, verify if we were able to get the discussion correctly. Please type the word jubilant. Type the word jubilant on your comment box, okay, to indicate that you understood this question, okay? Type the word jubilant when you understood this question. And the others are not yet typing. Probably they're researching about the spelling of the word jubilant. <laughs> okay. O oh, sige, may nakita akong kailangan i-check ang ating spelling for jubilant. You have to check that out, okay? Thank you very much. Now, I appreciate that. Now, let's go to another, which is your sixth question. Now, everyone in the English licensure, you will also encounter not only basics of literature, not only Philippine literature, not only American, and not only British or English literature, but you will encounter the timeless iconic historical masterworks in literature. Pag sinabi mong masterworks yan, yan yung mga andayeng. Kahit napa, na, 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 nakalipas na ang centuries and decades and very longest epoch in, in, in our times, uh, these literary pieces are seamlessly um, andayeng, very iconic, very historical, very timeless. In fact, pinag-uusapan pa rin natin siya in our English classrooms. Okay, so when you land into your professional teaching jobs right after the licensure, you will be expected to know this and to teach this to our students because they are masterworks in literature. Now, let's proceed to the question, okay? Now, the question is, which confusion teaching applies to the following hypothetical question? Now, doon pa lang you already are guided ng hahanapin natin ay confusion teaching, which is in reference to the philosopher Confucius, okay? Now, ano ang nationality ni Confucius? Japanese ba siya? Filipino ba siya? Chinese ba siya? Okay? O, sige nga. Confucius is Chinese ba? Japanese? Definitely Asian, no? But Confucius is what? Okay, Chinese ba siya? Japanese, Filipino? O baka may, baka ang iba, ang, ang tingin kay Confucius, Filipino din, okay? <laughs> Hindi naman, siguro. You're correct, man, Mary Joy. Confucius is a philosopher from China, okay? A Chinese philosopher. Now, tingnan natin kung paano siya. So, your, your mind should be concentrating on brainstorming which what are your um what are the confucian philosophies confucian ideas or confucian principles that you have learned over time okay now uh, looking at that question look at these i will try to verbalize the statement to you Daniel loves to play basketball. He tried out for the team and with the hard work, made the varsity squad. Okay, nakasali siya sa varsity nila. The team had a great season and Daniel really enjoyed playing with his teammates. However, one of the star players named Nathan is often hard on other players when they lose. So Daniel can casually ignore it, but after one playoff game loss, he criticized or Nathan criticized Daniel harshly in the crowded locker room for not making one free throw in the last few minutes of the game. So you have to understand the situation. This is a situational analysis, as how we call it. Now, doon na apply ang confusion principle, okay? So the first one is, confuse, is it letter A, as in exemplary persons make demands on themselves while petty persons make demands on others? Or is it letter B, he who rules moral force by moral force is like a nor is like a is like the pole star which re remains in its place while the lesser stars do homage to it. Or is it letter C? A young man's duty is to behave well to his parents and at, at home and to his elders. Or letter D, a gentleman or a gentleman is ashamed to let his words outrun his deeds. Okay. So letter A, everybody is the correct 
answer. Definitely, it will be like an easier part on us to choose letter A because the three other options are really not directly pertaining to the situation that was posed for you, okay? Ang pinakamalapit sa situation na yan is only letter A. So, letter A is the correct answer, okay? Now, Kasi kapag letter C, for example, a young man's duty is to behave well to his parents. Wala namang mention ng parents sa ating situation, correct? When you talk it, when you when you brainstorm about it logically, hindi naman hindi naman sa 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 loob ng bahay ang setting ng ating situation. It's within the court. It's among group of basketball players, and it's about Nathan a uh, nitpicking. Um, nitpicking Daniel for that uh, one free uh, throw game loss, okay? So, letter A is the correct answer, okay? Now, if you try to go to other references or to other um, literatures that you will be reading, there are five different confusion principles. Uh, mamadaliin ko lang, bibilisan ko lang, that um, C, uh, XI, is about the learning uh, that this is from Confucius. Meron din siyang tinatawag na Z, as in Z-H-I, which is uh, talking about character. Another confusion a principle is Ren, R-E-N, which is talking about benevolence. And then fourth confusion principle is Yi, as in Y-Yi, which talks about righteousness. And then the fifth confusion principle is Li, as in L-I, which talks about propriety. Okay, so your assignment is to research about the five different confusion principles or confusion teaching, okay, para may baon kayo for the incoming literature, okay? Now, I want you to type, I want you to type um, the adjective, the adjective, um, hmm. The adjective phenomenal, okay? I want you to type this adjective phenomenal, okay? Okay, I want you to please type the adjective phenomenal to confirm that you were able to understand the fifth, uh, the sixth question. So we have four more questions to go. Okay, very good. Ayan, thank you very much. There you are. Thank you very much for your phenomenal responses, my dear English majors. And we move on to the seventh question okay now let's move on to the seventh question and here is our seventh question okay our um english licensure will also cover one of our sub specializations which is campus journalism so everybody when you take the licensure expect that there are some and questions that pertain to campus journalism. Madali na lang ito sa mga student writers or sa mga university campus journalists. But as English majors in general, we have, we are expected to know at least the basics of journalism. So this question will address campus journalism concept and the question goes this way. What represents the areas of coverage in which reporters are expected to gather news of the day's events? Meaning to say, if we'll try to understand it in our own language, ano sa apat na options or sa apat na pagpipilian ang nangangahulugang listahan ng mga reports na pwede nating sulatin sa araw na ito. Okay? I, I, I hope my, my Filipino translation is correct and accurate. But that is the main idea behind that question. So is it letter A? Is it B? Letter B, is it lead? Letter C, is it prominence? Letter D, is it proximity? Okay? Now everybody, ganito siya. Try to understand that. Letters C and D, prominence and proximity, will be eliminated from our options. Why? Why, Sir Jake, that we have to eliminate letters C and D? Because letters C and D are actually elements of news, okay? When you're writing a news story, pag nagsusulat tayo ng balita, prominence and proximity are the elements that we have to follow. Eh, hindi naman element ang pinag-uusapan sa tanong. Ang pinag-uusapan natin sa tanong is just a simpleng listahan ng pwede nating sulatin sa araw na yun, okay? Therefore, hindi siya element and we eliminate letters C and D in our options. Kaya we're just left with letters A 
A or B. Ito naman ang problema. Mas madali na siya. Letter B is a part of the news report. Letter B, lead is the first paragraph or the introductory paragraph or of any news story. Okay? So it's a part of news. Hindi siya areas of coverage. Hindi siya listahan ng mga topics na pwede kong isulat. It's a part of an entire news article or an entire news story. Therefore, I will eliminate letter B. It's not a potential answer. And we're left with letter A. So the correct answer, my dear students, is letter A, B. Pag binigyan ka ng B ng isang editor-in-chief in a certain editorial meeting, nangangahulugan yun na ito ay mga listahan ng mga events, ng mga topics na pwede mong sulatin or yeah, sulatin as um, as a, a campus journalist. So here's the beat for today's, uh, for today. The beat is the areas of the coverage. Okay? Now please um, give me um, the word, the word, um, hmm, um, Okay, please give me the word tranquil, okay? Tranquil, because it is a tranquil evening. Please type the word tranquil on our comment box to indicate that you were able to understand the seventh question. Tranquil, okay? Very good, Bethlehem. I love your name, Bethlehem. <laughs> it reminds me of something gospel-based. <laughs> yeah, Bethlehem, okay? Um, tranquil. Okay, very good. That's why everybody, let's try to innovate. I, I, instead of saying good evening to, to, to others, you please say tranquil evening. Okay, please have a tranquil evening. It is a tranquil evening. Yassi. <laughs> okay, I hope I am building your vocabulary at the same time. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's proceed to the eight questions. We have three questions to go. It's my time here is seven five. Okay lang yan because we started 15 minutes. Uh, uh, 7.15, okay? So at least I will maximize that uh, to be fair with all of you, okay? Now let's try to have um, number 8 as our as our next question. So we're done with literature. We're done with campus journalism. One of the sub-specializations, another of English majors, is what you call the language research, okay? So I'm very particular that before graduating your bachelor's degree, okay? Or kung hindi man kayo English major at nanggaling kayo sa ibang degree, okay? Um, we, okay, are expected to have produced our student researches prior our graduation, okay? So you are familiar with quantitative data, you are familiar with qualitative data, you are familiar with mixed method, you are familiar with chapters one to five of the entire research, okay? So this will just be like a recap of uh, your research knowledge, okay? Now, ang maganda dito sa language research, everybody, Ang maganda dito, there are common concepts from the from the general research that we adopt in ang, our language research. Kaya lang naman siya tinawag na language research is the very practical fact that the topic that we are trying to research about is more uh, invested in our specialization. Like if I wanted to know the level of this speech anxiety of my students that is directly talking about my major, which is English or communication. Yun na naman pagkakaiba, the focus of our study. But there are some parts, some principles, most principles, most terms, most terminologies, most concepts of the general research that we adopt in language researches. Okay, so the first, the, the question is, what research is primarily conducted okay to first improve educational practice gagawin ko ang pananaliksik na ito because it will improve my educational practice as a teacher or gagawin ko ang research na ito because of management of the classroom or i will make this research because it will give me knowledge about classroom practices and interaction or i will create this research because it will enlighten me about classroom instruction so those are the purposes of this research that is being asked about first one is is it an action research b is it a case study c is it a historical research or letter D, is it ethnography, okay? 
while I'm discussing, the others are already answering. So I see the level of their activeness this evening and I appreciate that. But my chat box is being dominated by letter A as their assumed answer. Now I'll be waiting for the others to type also their responses. Is it letter A, letter B, is it letter C, or is it letter D? Okay. Mm. Okay. Now everyone, ganito siya. Confusing ang tatlo. Case study and ethnography seem to be very synonymous. Masyado silang magkapareho. There's a, there is a very thin line that sets them apart. Okay? Now, I would just want to contrast the two uh, kinds of research. Just by any chance that it will come out in the license review, at least you have a main a main concept of their difference. First one, if you call about if you talk about case study, um you talk about various phenomena. Masyadong malawak ang case study. Meron kang certain phenomenon that you are trying to study. But you are concentrated to a certain individual or to a certain community or you are concentrating to a certain event. Okay? Isang event lang or isang tao or isang community, that's where your focus is at. Okay? Or, yeah, your focus is at. Um, and then second one, um, pwede kang gumamit kasi ng different instruments in um, a case study such as a questionnaire, a survey, and others would argue that when you talk about a case study, there are circumstances that you really don't need to immerse yourself in the community. Like, you don't really have to live with them for a certain time so that in the progress of your research, although makakatulong, but others argue about you don't necessarily need to do that all the time. However, for ethnographic researches, kailangan mong manatili wherever your local is. For example, I'm 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 studying a certain phenomenon in a in a certain province. I have and I'm not from there, okay? But I have to immerse myself, which means I have to live and reside in our in that local to stay with the people, mingle with the people so I can observe, I can study. The, the, the phenomenon better. Yun yung ethnography, which also means that when you talk about ethnography, your main focus is about culture, kultura, okay? Case study may not necessarily always talk about culture. It could talk about culture, but ethnography will most of the time talk about culture or any cultural phenomenon. It will also tell that uh, ethnography will be longer it will it will require longer time okay yung pagkakaiba nila okay but nonetheless unfortunately case study and ethnography are eliminated in our options kasi hindi sila ang sumasagot sa tanong okay this study is going back to the past okay parang ex mo lang yan babalikan mo okay palagi mong binabalikan okay sana wag naman na okay now history is talking about past events past accounts okay and then action research is the key Answer, okay, so we are creating an action research. Kaya nga siya action eh, because there's a certain problem that emanates in our classroom. Say, for example, you're teaching oral communication, and one of the students, or most of your um, oral communication students, are having this high level of speech anxiety when they talk in front or when they deliver a report in the classroom. So you want to research about that so that you can help them out alleviate or reduce at least or remove that high level of speech anxiety. So I will conduct this research with that purpose. Meaning to say you are conducting as an, an action research. Or in other words, you are, uh, other references would call action research as a basic research. Okay? Maraming salamat. Okay? Now, let's try to, uh, let's try to key in the word rigorous because uh, that relates to research very much. I want you to please key in the word, uh, not rigorous, I want you to key in the word succinct. Succinct in the comment box to indicate that you understood the explanation. I want you to please type the word succinct. Okay? Succinct is an adjective that uh, is very directed to research. Okay? Succinct. Very good. Okay? John Aaron. Yeah. Good. Okay. Very good. Okay. I'm seeing the others spelling that correctly. Succinct is an adjective that is very close to research. And I always remember my teacher telling me that my research should be succinct. Okay. Punong-puno siya ng substance, but at the same time, concise din siya in a way. 
Okay, very good. Okay, thank you very much for those succinct responses. And we move on to the ninth question. Okay, sorry. Okay, ninth question is here. Now, apart from the nine, from, from that kind of, bibigyan ko pa kayo ng another example ng tanong sa language research. So, which of the following um, reviewees um, is manifested when there is an observed change in the participant's behavior based on their awareness of participating in an experiment, their knowledge of the research hypothesis, or in response to receiving special attention. Meaning to say, ang tinutumbok ng tanong in our own language is, ano sa tatlong options na binigay natin ang nangangahulugang nagbabago ang behavior ng isang tao or ng isang research respondent or participant dahil meron na siyang kaalaman kung ano yung research na ginagawa nating researchers at kung ano ang kailangan natin from them na data. Okay? Somehow, kung alam na nila yon nagbabago kung paano nila sagutin ang ating mga tanong or nagbabago kung paano nila sasagutin ang ating questionnaires. Parang ganun. Because of that knowledge that they already have or that awareness that they already have. Obtained. So is it Hawthorne's effect? Is it letter B? Is it, is it a halo effect? Or letter C, is it an observer's effect? Okay. Um, dominantly, I see letter C as, as, yeah, I see letter C as most um, of the answered letters. Okay, others are answering letter B. And here comes letter A. Okay. Okay. Letter C. Tapos meron pang uh, part side note si Bethlehem. Ayan. Letter C kasi nandun na yung keyword na observed. <laughs> okay. Saan mo nakita sa tanong ang observed na word? Ayun, meron. Okay. Now let's let... Pero unfortunately, Bethlehem, it's not to busted you out. <laughs> busted talaga. Is it not to... Uh, it's, but letter C is actually not the correct answer, okay? The correct answer in our option, in our question, everybody, is, is letter A, okay? Mabuhay ang lahat na sumagot ng letter A, okay? Letter A is the correct answer. Nagbabago ang behavior ng isang participant because he already has a knowledge or an awareness about the, the course of our study, okay? Kaya binabago niya. But a halo, I would want to expound halo, Halo, everyone, is a cognitive bias, okay? It is a cognitive bias that causes you to make a snap judgment, okay? Tama yung sinabi ni Rod sa ating chat box. There is a creation of a general impression. So kapag kunyari, feeling sa Baguio, um, kunyari lang ito ha, Baguio, um, medyo hindi siya magandang lugar, for example, ang Baguio City ay hindi siya masyadong magandang lugar. Uh, that was the, the the most common remarks that you hear from 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 the ones who visited there. And because of that, everybody na na-expose ka sa ganun, you feel like it's true. So you don't mind going to Baguio City and touring the place already because you were a little discouraged because of what you've heard as common remarks about it, na hindi siya maganda. Therefore, everyone... Um, nagkaroon ka na ng cognitive bias and there is a halo effect, okay? So, naapektuhan, hindi siya maganda sa research kasi naapektuhan kung paano natin i-interpret ang data as researchers and it would not also help us because um, there is already like this bias. So, 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 we're close to understanding other sides of the story when we're conducting our research, okay? That's the halo effect. Okay, and we have observer's effect. Ganito naman ang observer's effect. Okay, the researchers influence the influence the research. Um, this is a detection bias naman. Okay, which in which the researchers influence the results of their own study through their interaction with the participants. Okay, that is the observer's effect. So sino ang observer sa effect na yan? It's the researcher. Okay, nagkakaroon ka ngayon ng um, pagbabago ng isip or somehow the way that you convert, uh, converse with the participants in the study will affect your thinking and your understanding. Kaya, kaya nagbabago din kung paano mo unawain ang mga bagay because you are under an observer's effect. Okay, but the key answer or correct answer is 
letter A, Hawthorne effect, okay? Now, because of that word effect, I want you to type in the comment box the word effective to indicate that you understood the discussion. Type the word effective if you understood the discussion for the ninth question. Ayun. Very good. Thank you very much for those energy to type the word effective on our comment box. And we move on to another sub-specialization of our major, which is your which is your language testing or assessment. Now, everyone, sabi ko nga sa inyo, as English majors, marami tayong kailangang basahin. Meron ta marami tayong kailangang alamin. Marami tayong kailangang paghandaan bago tayo sumalang sa ating um, ever-awaited licensure review. And among those specializations that we already have encountered a while back, here comes another one that we need to concentrate on, and that is the language testing or assessment. Now, this one I will read to you the question, and while I'm reading, I want you to follow with me and then key in already in our comment box the key answer you think is the key answer, okay? So letter E ang sinagot na ng iba, okay? Tingnan natin yan mamaya. An employer wishes to select the best employee who is able to learn new language skills quickly and effectively. The chosen employee shall be sent to take language courses to aid for the company's new international branch which language test is best to administered to be administered in the for this selection so nangangahulugan ikaw ang boss ng isang kompanya okay nangangahulugan na naghahanap ka ng um, current employee mo na pwede mong ipadala para magtake ng language uh, training para sa itatayo mong bagong branch okay so paano mo i-determine kung sino sa mga empleyado mo ang ipapadala at susuportahan mo para sa isang language training well, what test is, actually, the correct answer there, everybody, is aptitude. That is letter A, okay? Now, I understand that most of us answered letter E. Bakit kaya, okay? Now, let's try to rationalize it. Unahin natin ang letter E. Since marami ang sumagot ng letter E, let me enlighten you, everybody, that a proficiency test is a practical application of your linguistic or language knowledge. Okay? It's a practical application. Which means to say everybody na pwedeng, well, if you want to test my, um, my confidence in speaking, then you give me a speaking task where I can authentically and practically apply what I learned from my speaking class. For example, that is proficiency. Pwede niyang sagutin ang ating tanong, but the closest one is actually aptitude. At i-explain ko yan mamaya kung bakit, okay? Now, let's go to letter D. Bakit hindi siya ang tanong? Why, why is achievement test not the correct answer? Because achievement test is talking about a progress it's a language learning progress, which means to say that you administer achievement tests, for example, in a classroom context, you're only giving the examination right after a certain week of discussion or right after one grading period or right after one quarter or right after one semester for senior high school students. Meaning to say, schedule ang pagbibigay mo ng achievement test. At the same time, the contents or the questions in your achievement test will test exactly the only things that you've discussed with them, okay? That is achievement test, okay? Now, a uh, placement naman is actually identifying their ability levels. Asan kaya siya? Beginning English speaker kaya siya? Intermediate? or intermediate uh, in, intermediate English speaker ba siya? Isa, siya, isa ba siyang advanced speaker or is it isa ba siyang proficient speaker malalaman mo ang kanyang learning um, language ability or communication ability through a placement test okay kung ano ang kanyang resulta doon madedetermine ang kanyang level or placement. Now, diagnostic is when you want to find out the person's abilities already, which means to say na nasa sa kanya na yon. 
what you only have to do is to administer the diagnostic test para malaman mo ang kanyang abilities, ang kanyang inherent natural abilities. Now, bakit ang key answer natin ay aptitude? Okay? Because in that certain situation, ang ating gusto as employer is to choose the employee by knowing the capacity, their capacity to learn something. Okay? Which means to say that an aptitude exam or an aptitude test is a test that we administer to determine the capacity of someone to learn something. And remember, in this situation, the employer is looking for somebody to learn a new language, mag-aaral ng bagong lingwahe. So, paano natin siya madedetermine? Ang gusto kong malaman ay, pag nilagay ko ba si employee Kevin sa pinadala ko siya sa language training na ito, kap Capable ba siya to learn the training? To learn in the training? Nagigets niyo ba ako everybody? Kaya aptitude test ang gusto kong i-administer. Kasi gusto kong makita kung sino sa aking mga employees ang my capacity or my capability to learn something new. Which in this situation is a new language. Okay? Yan. Okay? Okay. I want you to type the... I want you to type the word tried and tested to indicate that you understood the discussion. Type in the keyword, or it, sorry, in the comment box, the word tried and tested to, ident to indicate that you understood the discussion. Yes. Claro ba sa ating lahat? Ayan, very tricky, di ba? Uh, Ma'am Ma Mary Faith Vargas, letter A measures placement po. Uh, placement, if you mean their um, learning ability, uh, that is letter um, letter C, placement yon. Okay, minimeasure natin ang kanyang ability level pag placement. Pero kapag aptitude, ang kanyang capability to learn something new. Okay? And in our situation, it's talking about sending one who will learn a new language okay very good thank you very much for that um bibitinin ko kayo ng konti but uh, i'll be calling i'll be turning the virtual floor to uh to 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 coach sefi uh thank you very much everybody for this hour of uh discoursing with you i appreciate your energy and of course i see like bright futures ahead of you as uh professional teachers english teach, uh, teachers that is so maraming maraming salamat and I will see you very soon in other English review sessions. Ayan. Thank you so much, Coach, for that phenomenal uh, coaching session with the TCRC babies. Ayan. Thank you so much. Maraming maraming salamat po, Coach. And for those who want to join uh, English major and lahat ng major subjects actually, ayan, PM nyo po ako para sa details po. Uh, kung paano sumali at paano magbayad. Okay po? Ayan. PM nyo lang po ako sa mga gustong mag-ano po. Mag-avail po ng per session natin or yung full package po. Ayan. Thank you so much. Ayan. Tomorrow. See you again tomorrow for another session. Budulan session ni Teacher Seppi. Ayan. Maraming maraming salamat. God bless everyone. See you tomorrow.